There is hope, there is help, there is healing, yeah, yeah. Well, here we are at Rome Praise again, and today... You're going to hear from Miss Lynette, a sermon that she preached uh, uh, some time back. That's and right. I, 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 she's actually really, really good, and you're really going to enjoy it. You know, honey, uh, today I'm talking about that we need to be a people after God's own heart. Right. You know, the Word says over in um, Luke 10, 27, it says that we should love the Lord thy God with all of our heart. Yes. With all of our soul and with all of our mind, with all of our strength. And, you know, if we're going to be successful in life... We have to focus on God right. because He's the one that's going to help us to be successful. Right. And, you know, I think about the fact that um, God said that David was a man after his, his own, own heart. heart. Yes. And yet, was David perfect? No. Absolutely no, not. No, he wasn't. You know, but, you know, the, the qualities that David had was that he was quick to, to repent. repent and quick to forgive, right. quick to forgive others. And so, you know, in order to be a man, a woman after God's own heart, those are some of the things that we need to do as well as others. So yeah. let's go right now where I'm speaking about people after God's own heart. Now, you know, the first thought I had is, what is camp meeting? What is camp meeting? You know, I remember my father-in-law as actually we were probably the first ones that reestablished that name, camp meeting, um, into the charismatic movement because the charismatic movement didn't even know what a revival was, much less a camp meeting. And uh, so as he was talking about what is camp meeting, now uh, he went back further than my knowledge of what camp meeting was. And camp meeting, back when camp meeting was established, was, as he described it, a, a brush arbor, uh, which I don't know that I've ever seen one, a or a tent, yes. Now, a tent, I know about a tent. My dad was a tent man. And, uh, and it was like, you know, uh, I do know about the, uh, what did we put on the floor? Sawdust, and there was something else. Was it? Yeah, it was sawdust that we put on the floor. That's right. My dad always put sawdust in the tent. And then pallets, you know, people came expecting to hear from God. And, um, you know, so then we asked the question, well, why do we have camp meeting? Well, you know, there are several reasons. First of all, as I said... We come expecting to hear from God. But in order to hear from God, guess what? We've got to take our place out of the environment that we've been in, getting away from the cares of life. And how many of you know that they're always there? Getting away from the cares of life. Getting away as my mom would often say, and my dad would say this, honey, now I want to talk to you, but you need to clear your mind. Clear your mind. And I thought, okay, what am I supposed to do to clear my mind? <laughs> In other words, quit thinking about anything else. Totally take out of your thoughts. And how many times do we know that, especially in the world that we're living in now, as we multitask, that we really never clear our minds? I am sure that there are those of you right now that are surfing the internet while you're endeavoring to listen to me. Oh, by the way, you can post right now on Facebook and check in to Rainbow Bible Church. I will let you do that. <laughs> is, I don't think there is one for camp meeting. I tried. Is there one for camp meeting? Okay. Yeah, anyway, do whatever you need to do, okay? But, you know, we really, we think we can focus on more than one thing. We pride ourselves in that. But, you know, we really, really can't. 
I know I used to, I kind of gave up this vice, but um, I used to, when somebody would call me on the phone, when they're talking, I would be looking through my multitude of magazines that I get all the time. These are magazines that you can buy things from. You know, when you, when you purchase things on the internet, they just keep on giving you magazines. And so I would just thumb through them while I'm listening. Yeah, I do all my shopping on the internet. So I'd thumb through them while I'm, you know, listening on the phone. And most of the time that would be okay. But all of a sudden as I'm thumbing through this and something catches my attention, guess what? I'm tuning out to what this person is saying on the inside. And I'm tuning in to what I want to go up and buy on the internet. One time that happened to me. My daughter was on the phone. And all of a sudden, I've tuned out to what she said. And she said, Mother, Mother, quit looking at your magazines and listen to me. <laughs> but you know, so many times, we're so focused on everything else that we have tuned out the voice of God who is trying to get our attention. And guess what? The Holy Spirit does not holler. The Holy Spirit does not holler. He speaks in a very low voice. And if we're not listening intently, we're not going to hear his instructions. And so it's so important as we come to camp meeting to clear our minds, to keep our minds quiet, to clear them of even anything that we so desire to get at camp meeting. You know, many times uh, you go to a meeting and you're wanting to hear from God. And so you so focus on, oh God, uh, let the minister give me a word, let the minister give me a word, or let this happen, or let this happen. Hey, don't try to tell God what you need. <laughs> he knows what you need. And if you'll be open just to receive what he knows that you need, then I want to tell you what, you'll be filled with a whole lot of joy, a whole lot of peace. And you'll be able to accomplish what he wants to accomplish in your life. So, as we're coming to camp meeting, you know, one of the reasons we come is to listen to God for instructions. We come to, to get refreshed spiritually, but as, too emotionally. You know, we are emotional people. And sometimes we need our emotions refreshed. We need our joy restored. And that's another purpose of camp meeting. But the third purpose of camp meeting is to carry out the instructions that God gives you during this week. To carry out the instructions that God gives you this week. Now let me tell you, many times God will speak to you. I mean, God has spoken to me while somebody's been speaking. God has spoken to me during ministry time. God has spoken to me, you know, through the word of God as a scripture is being brought by the minister. Now, this is the only time that, that you can take your phone. And you can go to an iPhone, I don't know, you can go to that place, that place that says, what does it say? A notes. I think it says notes. You can go there, and I encourage you to go there and write down what God has spoken to you. What God has spoken to you. And the reason I say write it down, because you see, God is speaking to you under the inspiration of the anointing of God. And it's not coming through your mind. It's coming through your spirit. And when something is coming through your spirit, it's not, it's not normally registering to your mind. And if you don't write it down, you're not going to remember it when you need it. 
There are many times, whether it be in service, whether it be in my prayer time, whatever time it would be, that God would give me a word. I would write it down. Necessarily didn't apply to me at all during that time. Had no idea what the meaning or, or, you know, when or where that I would need that word. But all of a sudden, as I'm going to God, and maybe it's a situation, maybe whatever it is, I'm going to God asking God for an answer. God, give me an answer. I need to know what to do. I need to, you know, I need strength. I need encouragement. I need a word from you. And you know where he would direct me back to? He would direct me back to my notes. He'd direct me back to camp meeting 2012 when I wrote down something that Brother Charles had said in his ministry. He would direct me back right to the answer that I needed right then. And so make sure that you write down the instructions that God gives you. And of course, as I said, camp meeting is to, to, to build up your foundation in God, to build your strength, to restore your joy, to get joy back into your life. Because I want to tell you what, sometimes the cares of this life can get a little overbearing, right? I don't know about you, you may not be like me. A lot of people love challenges, you know, they love those things. I just love peace. I love peace, I love quiet, you know. (laughs) That's one time, years and years ago. Oh my goodness, I just, I just have to have quietness sometimes. I just have to have peace. And you know, when your kids are young, They're always noisy, right? They're always doing something. And I was reminded of that a couple of weeks ago as I was keeping two of my grandsons. I'd forgotten how noisy it can be all the time. (laughs) I'm talking about you, Wesley. (laughs) But I remember years ago, one time, uh, it was after dinner and I just needed some peace and quiet and my husband was very sensitive about that. I hadn't said a word, but he knew that I'd had it up to here. So after dinner, I just went over in the family room and got on the couch and I was just closing my eyes and just trying to have some peace and quiet. And all of a sudden I heard little scurryings. I think Denise was about four at the time. And I mean, I heard the kids just scurrying around and so all, and I heard my husband whispering and, and so all of a sudden Denise came and kissed me and she said, mommy, We're going to leave so you can have some peace and quiet. (laughs) I'll never forget that. I felt so guilty of, you know, of him recognizing that I needed some peace and quiet. But, you know, sometimes we just need some peace and quiet. But I, I love peace and quietness. And I love peace. And so, you know, one time as I was dealing with some things in, in the ministries and uh, you know, staff issues, and and I'd get one area just all, you know, peaceful, and oh my Lord, a fire would come over here. And then if I'd get that one peaceful, and then a fire would come over here. And after a while, you get tired of putting out fires. And, and you know, I, so I said to God, I said, God, when is it that, you know, I'm going to get everything peaceful, and I won't have any fires to put out? And he gave me such words of uncomfort. Never. (laughs) Never. I said, never, God, never. Uh, You mean I'm going to have to always do this? He said, yeah. Don't you remember? These things I've spoken to you that in me ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. In the world that you shall have tribulation, but I want to read this, and I'm sorry that's not even in my notes there, but I want to read this in the Amplified. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. Not in the things that are going around you, 
Not in the challenges that you have to meet every day. But he said, in me, you can have peace if you'll just keep your mind on me. He said, so that in me, you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. Amen, right? But listen to this. I love this. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Hallelujah. So I'm here to tell you that whatever situation may be coming your way, whatever trial may be coming your way, whatever tribulation may be coming your way, he has said, I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Amen. And have conquered it for you, but the problem is that we want to try to conquer it ourselves. No, he said, in me. You know, and so these are some things that we should be receiving from camp meeting. You know, however, many times I get, perver I get perturbed with the times that we are living in. You know, I see people here, I mean, they, they are on a high camp meeting. Woo! Hallelujah. And this can happen in church as well on Sunday morning. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. Nothing's bothering me. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, they get out into their situation. Instead of singing, I'm free, I'm free, nothing's bothering me. It's like, oh God, why did you put me in this situation? What am I going to do now? Sad but true. Sad but true, you know. And I see people, as my husband was talking about last night, you know. I see people, I mean, they're, they come in and there's nothing wrong with it. Running jumping, dancing, you know, being just happy in the Lord. And there's nothing wrong with that. David danced. Before God, he danced with praise. And so there's nothing wrong with that, you know. And I mean, you're just shouting and you're just happy. And yet, when you face, two days later, you're in the molly grubs. That's not what it's all about. You know, you come to camp meeting. I'm just going to tell it like it is, okay? You come to camp meeting and you're so excited when the minister, we're having a, you know, uh, this kind of service and the minister comes over and be blessed. And the anointing comes on you and you get slain in the spirit. And it's like, woo! Hallelujah. And then you get out in the parking lot and somebody cuts you off and you start cursing. That's happened. You're not very full of the word as my husband was talking about last night. Do you know that you have a destiny? That you have an assignment in the plan of God? And it's about recommitting yourself to fulfill that assignment. It's about revisiting that assignment. And so, I'm telling you what, in these last days, we're going to have to put on all of our armor. We're going to have to be strong, not in ourselves. No. There's no way that we can fight the battles that must be fought in ourselves. What are we going to have to do? We're going to have to be strong in the Lord. We're going to have to put on all of his armor. It says so that you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Now, as I was saying... 
God has a plan for your life. God has an assignment just for you. Don't try to take up somebody else's assignment. I get so tired of clones. No. Do you know that, that there's no one like you? There's no one that has the same D DNA that you do? Do you know that all of all of the, can you imagine of all the fingerprints in this world, there's, there's not a fingerprint like yours? I mean, we have to know that there is a God who could create every individual that there is and make no fingerprint alike. And so just as you're an individual, God has a plan, has a purpose for your life. And as you are here in camp meeting this week, I want you to revisit that plan. I want you, I want your passions to be reignited. So many times, because of situations that we've encountered in life, our passions get dim. And I want you to renew your passions for God. Jeremiah 1, verse 4, talking about Jeremiah, the Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. God said of Jeremiah, I knew you before you were born. Now, we know that God is no respecter of persons, right? He doesn't love me more than he loves you. Though I want to think he loves me more than he loves you. <laughs> but he doesn't. God loves each and every one of us equally. I would just encourage you today to place God first in your life. Yes. To trust Him yes. with all of your heart. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. And as you trust in Him with all of your heart, Know this day that he will direct your path and it will be a successful oh, yes. one, right? Oh, yes. You know, I'm thinking, honey, as the fact that um, we've used those scriptures oh, many all times. of our life. And sometimes yes. uh, trusting him just didn't seem like the logical thing to do. Right. Or exactly what he was telling us to do didn't seem the logical thing to right. do. But as we trusted in him, he has led us down the right path. Yeah. And you know what? Let me see that bargain bag. You, and it took faith, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it took <laughs> Which faith. Which is what this bargain bag is oh, all yeah. about. Well, turn it around. You got it all backwards. All right. Yes, so our can see faith, faith shield. Bag, our that's faith right. Shield. And this bargain bag is activate your faith package. Yeah, it's got all kinds of good stuff in it. Let's there. see what's in it here. You want to see what's in it? All right, here we go. Blueprints right. with Strong Faith, my book. Oops. And then... Uh, there's another faith one. Faith takes back what the devil's stolen, another one of my sermons. And then the real faith, Dad, Exceedingly Going Faith by Dad. And then a book that I really like, Speak to Your Mountain. And, uh, you know, actually what it's talking about, impossibilities, uh, different things that come up in your life. Uh, we're not going to speak to a physical mountain, but we're going to speak to these yes. mountains that come up in our life according to what the Word of God has said. Uh, this is a, a, it's about a hundred and, let's see what it is, 211 pages. And this is different messages that I preached on this thing about speaking to your mountain. Mm -hmm. So that's a good, and then a, a CD by Dad called Words. And you know, words are containers. And they're either filled with faith Love, hope, or they're filled with, uh, they're filled with hate and doubt and unbelief. Discouragement. Discouragement. Words uh, actually either they set the atmosphere. So that is a regular forty-one seventy-five. Just value. Value just for the, this right here. Not counting, Not counting the, bag, the bag. That's right. But you're going to get the bag and everything in it. 
for 1995. You need to rush to your phone right now, That's or right. go to that go to that computer and order it right now because it's gonna it's a it's half price. It's That's half right. price. So you need to get a hold of the bargain bag, and don't forget we got. Uh, Kemp meeting coming up on yes. Sunday, uh, starts Sunday, July the 20th through That's Friday right. night, July the 25th, right here on the Rama campus. And registration for Rama Bible Training College, Is uh, go, right, yeah, go right there to rbtc.org slash trendsetters. And uh, you can you can register online, or you can request a DVD to be sent to you that tells you all about the Absolutely. school. And of course, your big ladies' conference yes. coming up September 25 through 27. And you can register now for that. Yeah, online. at rama.org/ktf. You can go to rama.org and find out anything about yes. us. And you know, and I want to thank all of you because. You know what? Without you, we couldn't continue to keep this on and without your partnership. And we have word partners. And uh, you can go right there to rhema.org slash WPC and find out what a, what a word partner is. It's somebody that, that helps us every month with a, with a financial gift. Some are large, some are small. Mm -hmm. But when they all come together, we're able to do everything that we need to do. And if they could just hear the testimonies that yes. we get when we're out traveling here in the U.S. and then overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know what? Last month, uh, we were down in South America. And we, yes. had, we had, I don't know how many people testimony, said testimony testimonies that, that they watch us on the, on the television. And so we, we want to thank you for partnering with us and helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. It's that time of year again to celebrate. No, not that. It's time for Lynette's Bargain Bag. Six powerful faith tools and Lynette's Bargain Bag Tote for only $19.95. With three powerful books by Kenneth W. Hagen, the mini books, Faith Takes Back What the Devil's Stolen, and Blueprint for Building Strong Faith, plus the inspiring book, Speak to Your Mountain. Also, Kenneth E. Hagen's books, The Real Faith and Exceedingly Growing Faith, plus Kenneth E. Hagen's Faith Building CD, Words. You see, you can have faith in Jesus, both as Lord and Savior, but if you don't confess it, it won't save you. There's no such thing as a secret believer. All six faith tools and Lynette's tote bag for only $19.95. Don't miss this awesome bargain bag. Call 888-PRAISE-8 or order online at rhema.org today. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rhema Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.